Welcome to PC Jack. So, this week, I finally managed to pick up a Ryzen 5 5600X, which I'll be dropping into my Mini ATX VR rig, which currently has a 2600X. The 2600X has been really great to me over the last few years, but uh, with the gen over gen improvements from Zen Plus to Zen 3, in terms of power efficiency, clock speeds, and general IPC improvements, it's uh, going to be a very good upgrade for me overall. Now before I can, there's something very important I have to do first. The system it's going into has a Gigabyte B450i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard, which is compatible with Ryzen 5000 series, but it will not boot with a 5600X unless we update the BIOS. As some of you may be aware, AMD previously stated that B450 would not be compatible with Ryzen 5000 series, and due to major backlash from the PC community, they actually did do a U-turn on this and uh, agreed that they would support the B450 chipset for Ryzen 5000 series. This came from the fact that AM4 has had to support such a wide range of CPUs over the last few years from 2017 to 2020, and due to the motherboard's ROM limitations, it makes it very tricky for motherboard vendors to support any kind of CPU from AMD on AM4 socket. But for now though, P450 gets a bit of extra life with the addition of Ryzen 5000 series, which is good news for me if I'm wanting to drop this 5600X into my system. So that's what we're going to be doing today and I thought I'd show you the process just in case you're not very familiar with uh, updating your BIOS or uh, you're just looking to do the same thing yourself. So to find the BIOS updates for your particular motherboard, just look up the model of your board and you should be greeted by a support page with a list of BIOS and driver downloads. So if I put in Gigabyte B450 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. Here we go. This should take us to the support page for this. Here we go. And then we're going to want uh, Windows 10 64-bit. And usually it'll be labeled. So here we go. We've got BIOS for here. Now, the current version I have is uh, version F50. So the version we're going to want to need is the most up-to-date version, which is F61D. So uh, all we're going to want to do is uh, click download on that save. Now it's worth noting certain motherboards will have you uh, needing to update from uh, a particular BIOS to another one in order to get to the one you need. So for example you might have to update to F51 first and then go to F61D. Uh, it doesn't say anything about it in this case so uh, we'll just go straight for the latest one. Open that and then uh, we'll have to extract this. No I'm not paying for the new Renoir. There we go. If we find the extracted file here you go, and uh, this will be the extracted file you receive, but for this one with the uh, letters and numbers, this is going to be the file that we'll need. So uh, you'll also need a uh, USB drive formatted to FAT32. All we're going to do is uh, copy this across. So now that we've got this uh, saved on the uh, USB drive, we can now uh, take this out and uh, plug it into the system that we're going to update the BIOS on. Right, so then what you're going to want to do is to uh, get in the uh, BIOS for your motherboard. You can do this by uh, just mash and delete when you boot the system up, and I should eventually bring you here. So uh, the thing we're going to be looking for is uh, QFlash. Now it could be called something else on your motherboard, but for Gigabyte it's always going to be uh, QFlash. So let's go for that. And we want to update the BIOS, not save the BIOS. So update. There we go, and we got that USB plugged in and it's recognized that file we've got saved. Click on that, and then go. And it'll ask us to start. And it's now updating the BIOS. Now, it's very important, you do not power down the system for any reason whatsoever, because you will brick your system if it does happen. So uh, make sure there's no way you're gonna lose power or uh, unplug the system in any way. But just let it do its thing. It can take a couple of minutes, so, uh, see where it's worked once it's done. There we go, and the, uh, the BIOS update is now complete. It's just gonna reboot for a second, and uh, what you may find is the system will just turn off and on a couple of times while it works through the, uh, the update. But then, eventually, it should bring us into the uh, Windows desktop. And there we go, now we're uh, back in the desktop now. So uh, what we can do, just to verify that update did work, is we can head back into the BIOS. There we go, so we're in the BIOS, and there we go, we can see we're on F61D, so the BIOS update was a success, and uh, it should now mean that we are able to swap out the 2600X for a 5600X. Let's get the uh, system uh, turned off, and uh, let's get that swapped over.
Right, so we swapped over from the 2600X to the 5600X now, which should mean that we're ready to go. I've just chugged a Rave Stealth on there for now, just to uh, verify it's actually working because it's nice and simple to take on and off. If you haven't seen my tutorial on how to install and uninstall the Rave Stealth cooler, then make sure to check out the uh, video I uploaded on it a couple of months ago. So with all that, I think we are ready to uh, see if this system posts with a 5600X. Do we have a boot? Come on. Woohoo! It posted. Yep, as you can see, we got the uh, 5600X, it's uh, booted up. It's always a bit nerve-wracking doing a uh, BIOS update, but if you follow the steps correctly, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you, I'll see you next time.